This video is about arts and crafts. It's about improving layer adhesion on small parts. It's about producing parts in quantities and how to set all that up within your tools. For today's purposes, I'm going to use Fusion 360. Of course, you could do the same thing in any number of other CAD tools. I'm just gonna show you the workflow with Fusion 360 and Bamboo Studio. I haven't seen this technique for packing lots of parts on a build platform and making sure that they print well, have good layer adhesion, but they're also very easy to get off of the build plate and post-process, and you don't have to do nearly as much cleaning for a brim or what have you. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to go about setting this up and utilizing it. For today's purposes, I'm gonna use Fusion 360 and Bamboo Studio to demonstrate it, but you could use the same idea in any CAD program that you wanna use. So we're going to go through that, and I'm also gonna show you some arts and crafts. Let's get into it. So with Fusion, I've imported STLs in the past, so this time I'm going to import a step file, which tends to have more detail than STL files. And most slicers these days support step files as well. So we're here within a project that I've set up called Working With Step, and we're going to upload. We'll select our files, and we're going to get our step file. And this is where we want it to go. We want it to drop into this project. Uh, you can add additional files. You can drag and drop. So we're gonna go ahead and upload. And then it needs to think about it. So we'll accelerate this. Okay, so you've incorporated it and you can bring it in. However, with what we're gonna do, we're going to want to edit it. So I need to change it to editable. Which kind of sounds like edible, but here we are. Double click. And here's our part. Uh, one of the things that I'm not a huge fan of is because of how I designed this, the zero of the z-axis is actually at this top plane and I really want it to be at the bottom. All right. All right, if we hit document settings, we'll see the units is in meters. Uh, we want it in millimeters, so we're gonna go ahead and change this. I think meters is not uncommon for a step file move this is a very strange axis no no okay all right so we're going to go up 10 millimeters nope it is not the z-axis <laughs> all right well uh pick your pick your axis let's try that was not what we want that's not what we want Uh, cool. I think that got it. Yeah, it looks like it's sitting on top of the axes. All right. So, uh, now we have it set up where we want. This is the Z axis of the, it wasn't the Z axis of the move, but it is the Z axis of the part. So that's great. So we have this as a step file. Uh, we can create sketches. I'm going to create sketch nailed to the bottom of this thing. And if you wanted to, you could create a sketch like so. Finish sketch. And then you could do things like this and chop off parts of your step file. So step files are actually a little bit easier to modify after the fact than STLs. And so uh, that's why I like to upload parts as step files as well as STLs because people expect STLs but if you want to do any modifications it's better to do it in step so I think folks are headed in that direction we'll see what happens they do seem to have more detail and they're easier to edit uh, so first thing we're going to do is get rid of that oh my that was unexpected <laughs> uh, all right control z control z okay we're back to here. Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. All right, we've got nothing. We're gonna go in here and capture design history. Okay, all right, so that's what we want to look like. Create a new sketch, and instead of attaching to the axes here, I'm going to attach to the part. And let's see if that works a little better. Yep, so now I can reference to the part because it's attached to the bottom of the part. Right. 
this is where it uh, where we get to the magic of the technique. Uh, you can do it on the corners if that works for your part. I'm going to try to not do it on the corners just to make cleanup easier. So what I'm doing is I am adding tabs on a frame and it will all make a whole lot more sense later. Okay, there we go. We got some tabs and what I'm going to do here 0.8 works for me. Okay. All right, 0 0.8, 0 0.8. Looks like we've got it all around. Finish sketch. Extrude. I want to extrude this. I want to extrude that. I want to extrude that. Uh, I am printing 0.12 layer height because this part is so small. So. Uh, that's how far I'm going to extrude it, and it is going the wrong direction. I want to extrude it up so it's in the plane with the bottom of the part. And okay. So now when I go into bodies, I see a single body, which is what I want. All right, so now what I have done is I have added these tabs. In testing, if it's not getting it and they need to be moved to the corners or I need to move additional tabs, I can do that. But the technique for adding the tabs is, as I showed you, you import the part and then you create the sketch. I will show you now as I import this into Bamboo Studio why I did it this way. Okay, so let's save this one first. File export. And we do not want to export it as their files. I want to even export it as a step. All right. So, and here, I'm going to call this uh, tabs. 3D not tool tabs. Okay, cool. Let me switch you on screens. First step moving over to Bamboo Studio is to bring the part into it. And now I have a little skirt around my part with these tabs. It improves the bed adhesion slightly, but that's not really the, the end of this technique, right? So this is meant to be used in conjunction with multiple parts and also a brim. So I'm gonna walk you through uh, setting that up. So first off, using Bamboo Studio, we're going to clone, we're gonna create multiple parts, we're going to arrange the parts, and then we're going to fiddle around with the arrangement of the parts just because they needed to be symmetrical and that bothered me. Anyway. Now we're going to go into print sequence and we want to go into the print sequence and make sure that it is set up to by layer, not by part, by layer. That is a separate technique that we may address in a different video. Also for brim type, we want to make sure that it is outer brim only, which is important. We don't want to have any brim inside of our tabs, which will kind of destroy this technique, right? So outer brim only. And here I'm just adjusting it because that part just didn't want to sit in the right place. So now we have a, a very large brim that encompasses all of these parts. And so it's going to improve the part adhesion for every single one of these parts. And now the, the resultant part uh, of bed adhesion, you can see how it builds the, and every time it builds more, it improves the adhesion because it's hanging on to the last piece and increases your chances of each part printing successfully. And then that bed adhesion is connected to the part through these small tabs. So that it's very easy to rip the tabs off and post process the parts and be done. So when you actually go in to print it, this is how it turns out. It creates a large footprint on the bed uh, and then it goes up and it prints all these parts and they're all tied into each other. So I didn't have any problems with them tipping over and falling, but this part is so small that when I had printed it previously, it had fallen over and been a problem. Removing the raft wasn't really a problem. I didn't have to pop the bed or anything. I just had to get a hold of the corner of it and just pull it up. Um, the one issue that I did have is the brim, there was so much brim material that some of it wanted to stick. And so there is another technique that I can show for that. But as far as post-processing these, it's pretty much just popping them out. And if you want to be extra detailed, you just go in there with a thumbnail. This is the part that we're printing. It has very, very small bottom surface contact, and it's a taller 
part. It has these two little grooves on it because this part is designed to make it very easy to make a barrel knot. So you lay the string and the groove on the back, you do your wraps, depending on how large you want the knot to be, and then you have the large groove in the front that you can just slip the string through, and then you pull the tool out of the way, tighten up your barrel knot, and there you go, you have a finished barrel knot. And then it's just do it over and over and over again. In order to reduce the chances of stuff sticking to the bed like I just showed you, I'm going to show you another technique. And the first step in that technique is I want to go back in and I want to fix all of these so that they are parameterized. So you go to user parameters, you hit this plus sign, you enter the name of the parameter, uh, make sure you have the unit set up, and then you can set up expressions based on if you're doing multiples of something. In this particular case, I'm using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, and so I want to use multiples of that. And I'll fix that parameter here in a little bit. So just going through, creating all the parameters that I want, the brim width, the tab width, the brim offset, all of those things that then will allow me to come back into here, identify each part, and go through and change them. So the, the process here is I'm going to change the parameter names. So for example, this brim offset I need to take that name and then apply it where it should belong. So double clicking on this, uh, backspacing it all, selecting the part, and then it's just rinse and repeat, go through, change all of these to match the appropriate names that match what that parameter stands for. For the tabs, I wanted to keep them to just two nozzle widths, right? So this is a 0.4 nozzle. So I'm changing all of these to be, or trying to change all of these to be, 0.4 nozzles times whatever width it is that it should be, right? And so I actually want it, <laughs> not 12, all right? Fix it. It's supposed to be two. Come on, man. There we go. So now we get two uh, nozzle widths, which is very small. It'll be strong enough to hold, but it'll pop off uh, and be easy to post process, which is the whole point behind this. So I'm just going to jump in here and change this, right? But it's such a small change, it's not obvious. So to show you how that really works, I'm going to make it a ridiculous change. And now there you go. See, entering one number fixes all four sides, which is so much more handy and convenient and it makes doing this much easier. So I really encourage you to set it up with parameters from the very beginning and save all this rework. So now I'm going to go through the process of modifying this base to give me a little bit more structure. Uh, in order to do that, now I'm going to create new parameters which make it easier for me to make these modifications and edits from the very beginning so that I can adjust things as I want as we move along. I'm creating new parameters here, the brim thickener uh, width and brim thickener height, and I'm changing them as multiples of nozzle width or layer height, depending on how I'm planning on printing them. So that would give me the ability, if I decide to print at a different layer height, to change those parameters so we're just going to fast forward through putting all these things in place. And then the, the idea here is by creating a slightly thicker brim, it will have a little bit more structure to it. And while you will use more material, it'll be easier to pull up. The other thing is, uh, which I'm going to show you here in a minute, is this technique can be you create a single part and then you use your slicer to lay it out and add brims. However, you can also design it in the CAD program and make it a single part. So the CAD program will see this as one single part. In order to do that, once you get all your parameters and adjustments correct, then you pattern it out. So I've created a pattern here. I selected the primary axes. This pattern in Fusion allows you to go 
in two different directions. So I'm just using the sliders, looking at the overlap to make sure that there is enough overlap that it will print as, as a solid piece and there won't be gaps in between them. So here's a simple three by three part. And what I've done is now the brim is actually two layers high. The tabs are only one layer high, which will make them even easier to break off. And then the last step of the design is I designed just a tiny little nub towards the bottom in the corner that is extruded out, prints up, and then it makes it easy to pull this part off of the build platform with. And it worked very well. This came off completely cleanly from the build platform. I exported the entire file as a step file, so that included all of the bodies. And it was just an easier way of doing it versus uh, pulling out uh, the STLs together. So drop the step file here. Uh, reoriented it within the slicer because I wanted that little tab to be forward just because it was easier to access although it's a removable build platform so it's not required but that's how I oriented it so it was facing forward uh, after slicing these slicer settings are essentially the same uh, there is still a brim here but I I narrowed it down to minimal so there's almost no brim at all and you can see how this will print as a single part instead of uh, building up each part, it does the entire frame and then it goes in and does the parts, which is a little bit different from how it does when they're all individual parts. This is viewed as a single part. And the result, they come out very, very easily. Uh, at most, if you just pull them out, you have tiny little tabs. You can pull those off with a thumb or a tool if you want but it's much easier than having to clean off an entire brim. So I hope this helps. Here's two different techniques for how to improve bed adhesion of very small parts printed in quantity and also to make it easy to post-process them. The first way of doing it, unfortunately, the brims can be very sticky and you might have to scrape them off. The second way uses a little bit more material, but it removes much easier. I hope that you find this technique useful and you're able to incorporate it into your printing in the near future. Start recording. All right, we're there. Uh, what was I gonna say? Printing sm Do not disturb.